Welcome to Quill Sword Blogcast. Veterans Day. Freedom ain't free. Red Poppies. Over 100 years ago, the world went to war. Tomorrow, we remember those who died in World War I and all those that served our country on the field of battle. Far too many of those who fought for our freedom never returned. The poem Flanders Fields speaks poignantly of the red poppies blowing in the breeze between the gravestones of the fallen of World War I. In Europe, they celebrate Remembrance Day on November 11th, the day that World War I, the war to end all wars, ended. We celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th, honoring all living and dead who served their country. The wearing of the red poppy has become more common in America as we honor those who died for our freedom. Originally, we celebrated Memorial Day to remember all who died in service to their country and Veterans Day to commemorate those both who died and who came home, but with a special inferences on those who served and came home to us. Now we don't make much distinction between the two holidays as we remember all who served. Twice a year isn't nearly enough. So very many had their lives cut short, and far too many of them would never even be returned to the land for which they died. It's easy to understand the sacrifice they made, even as we struggle to fathom how they could have paid such a price for us. Perhaps it would be best if we went back to distinguishing between the two holidays. We too quickly forget that those who came home aren't the same men we sent to war, and many struggle with the memories we can't even imagine for the rest of their lives. It's very hard to bring a man home from war whole, whether in body or mind, sometimes both. A piece of him stays forever in war. I don't think that because we keep our women from the heat of battle that they don't serve and that they don't pay a high price, sometimes the ultimate price, for their service when women, too, put on the uniform and serve in war. Flirting with battle as they support those in the field comes with a heavy price. Heavier still is the price countless nurses have paid as they cared for the wounded and broken churned out by the machine of war. You don't need to hear bullets fly to die a little inside as you try to convince a 19-year-old that the loss of a leg isn't the end. Of all the stupid and morally wrong things the U.S. has ever done, allowing her sons to return home from Vietnam to derision and disdain ranks among the absolute worst. It took us nearly 20 years to realize what we'd done and to begin to try and atone for it. Those men served in the worst rotation plan we'd ever come up with, spending 12 months in near-continuous combat before, before being unceremoniously dumped back into civilian life. The intention was good, to try to make service easier by making it faster, but the effect was devastating. Our sons came home with varying degrees of what they now call post-traumatic stress disorder most of them with serious problems. They came home to an angry country that couldn't decide if it want, what it wanted to do or whether we should be fighting at all. Those decisions are ours. They belong to we the people and not to those who go where we send them to fight our fights. In anger and frustration, we took our fury out on our own sons who had only done what we asked of them. The way we treated the returning Vietnam veterans must never be forgotten because it must never be repeated. To the credit of that flag we love and they serve, we have learned that lesson pretty well. We've disagreed and fought over other wars fought in our name, but never again have we turned on our own for doing what we asked and for paying the price. We pay a tiny fraction of what we owe when we remember our veterans, living and dead. Make no mistake, freedom costs a whole lot more than we can begin to understand. Freedom requires service. Our founding fathers understood this. 
Our grandparents understood this all too well when the War to End All Wars had a part two less than 20 years later. It's more than just the ten guys behind the line supporting the one in combat. It's figuring out who to vote for and why and then voting. It's writing your congressman to have your say on whether or not we should commit to fighting. It's boxing, boxing up a care package so some lonely kid knows that his country hasn't forgotten him in the big machine of the military. It's being we the people just as seriously as we expect our military to professionally march into hell and win our battles. This freedom thing is the most expensive thing in the world. Remember, when you thank those in uniform for their service, and when you thank those that served for all that they have done, that you are just paying a tiny fraction of the price. Freedom ain't free. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the United States Military Services. Thank you one and all for your service. We can't put it into words, but your service means the world to us. Please accept our gratitude. Happy Veterans Day.